Hello again, and welcome back to another F Modern Unity tutorial. I'm really sorry it's been a while since we've done one of these, uh, but it has been so long I thought we've just got to get one out there, get one out there now as soon as possible, uh, and hopefully we can do a few more of these and do some uh, other stuff. Uh, I've got a few more video ideas, so hopefully we can do some more interesting things with sound and, you know, maybe do some weird funky more sound designy stuff where we you know create different sounds with different things but anyway nothing about that sorry this has been a while uh today we're just going to be looking at a few little things in the fmod api which might help you guys work with unity a bit more and kind of manage your, your buses and the events going through the buses uh, and some instances a bit more which is all very important uh so hopefully it won't be too long it'll be a nice short and sweet one to get us back into it cool uh so let's as always jump straight into it the first thing I want to, well, first of all, let's quickly explain the scene I've got going up here. So to demonstrate what we're talking about, uh, I've got a little scene. Uh, little guy, we play as, he's right there. And this little circle here is going to be uh, a trigger. When we walk to the trigger, we're going to change scenes within Unity uh, to an identical scene. We're basically going to flip-flop between two scenes and do the exact same thing. The reason why is because in this scene, I've got an ambience playing. I've also got the player making footsteps, but that's not important. I've got an ambience playing. Uh, and whenever we change the scene, I want the ambience to stop and start again. Essentially, I want all of my sounds, if there were more sounds, to stop uh, completely. So then that when we load the new scene, even though it's identical, we can then have a new list of sounds play. So to do that, I've created a script called Example Scene Change here. So let's quickly have a look at it. Very simple. Uh, we, won't, we won't look at too much how we actually change the scene. Uh, if you are interested in knowing how to do that, just I'm sure there'll be are plenty of YouTube tutorials online. Uh, what you need to know is you need uh, this namespace here. You need to create a public string. Well, this is one way to do it. Create a public string called whatever, which is where, if we quickly go back to the script here, which is where you enter the scene that you want to change to, so it knows which scene to change to. Uh, and you also add this line, scmanager.loadScene. And then you add the name of that string variable you just created. Uh, and you also quickly, I'm trying to be really quick with this so we don't go too much about it. We've got build settings and you simply drag the scene into this section here. So Unity knows you're using these scenes. Okay, cool. Enough about that. That's not what we're here for. What we're here to do is look at the FMOD stuff I've added. So first thing you can see here is I've created a little reference to uh, our buses, which I've called Master Bus. Uh, because for this, uh, what I want to do is essentially say, all the events we've got running through the Master Bus, I want to stop when, we, uh, when we're about to load our next scene, or as we load the next scene, right? So we create this little reference to a bus. It could be any bus, I've just chosen the Master Bus. You can, you can do this with, I don't know, uh, Music Bus, you could do this with Sound Effects Bus, Ambience Bus, uh, voice over bus, whatever you want to do. I've chosen the master bus, okay? So on the start function here, I've said that I want that master bus. I want to connect it to the master bus in FMOD. Now, similarly to when we're trying to reference uh, FMOD events, we usually, for an, for an instance, we usually quote them like this. We, instead of putting bus, we'll put event, and then we'll type the name of the event here. So maybe it's, I don't know, gunshot event and then it would know okay we're using the gunshot event in fmod uh, however for the master bus what we want to do and the same thing goes with buses say i had a bus that was the music bus we type in you know the music bus uh well the name of it and then it would know to reference that bus but because i want to basically if i quickly jump into fmod and show you ignore all this word a little mixer because i want to basically tell this bus our master bus to stop all events all we need to do is put bus, put our colon and our forward slash and then nothing else. And it will know from that that we are referring to the master bus in FMOD. Uh, I think I did a video a while back where I didn't know I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know you could do that. So I created my own little master bus, which is pointless. You said, essentially, I had two master buses. Uh, one that was called, my own one that was called master bus and another one which was the actual one. So that was just a waste of time and effort. So don't do that. <laughs> Use this method a lot easier. Uh, and FMOD knows uh, what you're on about doing that. So uh, we've basically created that reference and we've attached it to our master bus as soon as we start our scene. Cool, simple. Then I've got on trigger enter function. So when we enter that trigger circle, 
Uh, we're going to change scene, which I explained earlier, but also we're going to use this little cheeky line here. So master bus, our reference to our bus up here, stop all events and then allow fade out. Now, I think in my last video, I talked about the allowed fade out and the difference between that and immediate. So we won't worry about that. But this is what you need to know. This is the line here. So what, this is really simple. All it does is say any events that are currently playing through the master bus, we want them to stop. It doesn't destroy the instance of those events, uh, unless of course they were one shots, but uh, it will just stop all the events, so it will stop playing, okay? Uh, cool, so let's see, I think. Yeah, cool, so that's all, everything to do with this script. Let's quickly just save it, uh, and let's quickly show you what I mean. So, in fact, before I show you what I mean, let's quickly show you the ambience I was on about the one that we're gonna be using for to demonstrate this. So, uh, if you've seen my dynamic ambience video, it's basically the loop I'm using. Let's quickly turn it down and play it for you. Cool, so it's just a creepy ambience that fades in and, and fades out uh, and loops seamlessly. Uh, so if I quickly go on to here. So when we play the ambience, it will fade in because I've set the attack of the AHDSR envelope to one and it will fade out uh, within one second because I've set the release to one second. Uh, and if you want to learn more about AHDSR modulation, check out uh, the video. I think it was my last video I did, I talked about that. If it's not, I'll probably stick a little link in the top right corner of the video. But yeah, so when we start the uh, scene, we're going to have a ambience play, and then when I enter that trigger, it's gonna stop. We're going to change to the, another scene, but it'll be a duplicate of this scene. So the same thing will happen. This will stop and then start again because it's set up the exact same way. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you the script that tells this event to play. Cool, so enough about that. Let's quickly play our scene and show you what I mean. Uh, so we should hear the ambience. There we go. So whenever I enter that trigger box, it's flipping from scene to scene and it's stopping the event or stopping all events going to the master bus, but there's only one or two, including the footsteps, uh, and start again. Uh, cool. Simple enough. Uh, let's see. So, stop the events, current news. Right. So let's have a quick look at the script that, well, essentially tells our ambience to play, which I've got here. So this is the first part of this little tutorial. I just wanted to show you this little line, very handy, obviously. Like I said, you could do it with even a master bus or any bus you want. And you could do this at any time. You don't have to do this when you're changing scenes. You could just, if you wanted to stop all the events in, in, a, in a bus, for whatever reason, you can use that line. Cool, simple. Now let's look at our other script. So uh, what we've got here is a very, very simple script. All it's doing is creating an, inst an event instance called AE. I'm attaching that instance to the ambience event. Uh, as you can see here, we've quoted it like I was talking about earlier. Uh, and as soon as the game starts, I'm taking it to start. Now, this is the new line we haven't used before, uh, dot release. Now, release is not the same as stopping an event. What release does, it's a way of destroying an instance uh, like we would with a play one shot. Uh, destroying an instance that you don't want to use anymore. And this is good because if we don't do this, or don't do this enough, we can have too many instances building up and that's not fun. Obviously we've talked before in the past how we can limit that within FMOD, but sometimes it's good to just have control uh, within the game and know if you don't if you know you don't need an instance, you might as well get rid of it. So the way release works is you can either, you can either set this up so that once the event is finished at whatever given time you want, you can add this line and it will destroy the instance, okay? So you won't be able to play it again because you've destroyed the instance. You have to create another one somewhere along the lines. You'll have to call uh, a new instance again to start it. Or what you could do is do what I've done. As you can see, I've put it right after the uh, start, uh, our well, when we start the instance. So that means it will still play the sound, uh, but it, as soon as the, the sound stops, or the event stops, it will destroy the instance with it. So, going back to my other script, here, so once I tell all my events to stop playing, including our ambience, because I told the ambience event or instance to release as we started, it will destroy the instance as well, okay? Uh, so every time we're changing to a new scene, 
we're not getting a build up of instances that we're not using because they, every time we change a new Steam, we'll be creating a new one. So imagine if that wasn't there, if I quickly do this, if that wasn't being used, we'd have all these these ambulances coming in and out. Uh, so it sounds like we've only got one thing playing at a time, but we'd have all these build up of instances, which is obviously gonna affect the CPU uh, of whatever device is running our game. It might make things laggy if this builds up, you know, if you've got a massive game and you've got loads of instances just piling up. Yeah, we talked about this before. It's not good, basically. Uh, cool. So that's the second thing I want to show you. One more thing I want to show you is uh, a quick feature in FMOD. Now, this feature is called the Profiler. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this today. I'm just going to quickly use the Profiler to demonstrate how men how you can have a build-up of instances. Hopefully, in the future, I will talk about the Profiler. But to be honest, there is a lot of videos already online talking about FMOD's pro Profiler, how to use it, and what it's good for, and all that. Uh, so definitely, just check them out if you're interested. Uh, or let me know if you want to you if you want to see me do you know my video on it because that'd be quite cool to do actually. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about how this works too much. I'm just going to quickly set it up uh, so that we can basically count how many instances are running in our game. Okay. So, first of all, I quickly want to just save oops, <laughs> save this uh, uh, edit I've made to this script. So now uh, I've sort of dashed out this line here. We won't be destroying the instance every time we stop the event from playing, okay? We'll, essentially, every time we jump to a new scene, we'll be creating a new instance, right? That's first things first, right. Then I want to quickly play our game. And as soon as it starts playing, anytime now, Come on, you. Oh, it's compiling the script, that's why it's taking. There we go, right. Quickly jump into F mod. Uh, come over to this page. No, that's the mixer. Let's quickly close the mixer, don't need that now. This page, cool, here's the profile. I'm gonna quickly go live update. I'm gonna go collect a local host. Long story short, this is a very simple way of connecting to a, a game in Unity's editor. You play the game, come down here, connect to the local host. Ignore that uh, siren in the background if you could hear that. You most probably definitely can because he's going right past my house. But um, we connect to the game using the local host, and now what we could do is record our session. And this will give us a load of information that's really useful. Give us how much CPU we're using, how many sounds are playing. If you want, you can go into um, you can go onto this page here. I can't remember. Oh, the event editor, and you can select specific events you want to monitor and see when they play. Oh, oh ignore that. I keep kept in the last video. So yeah, you can monitor loads of different uh, variables within our game, but we're looking specifically for the instances. So I can show you how instances might build up. So let's hit record, and what I'm going to do is just quickly play that game again. Just keep going to keep keep changing between scenes and show you how many instances build up. So if I scroll all the way down here, there's only two instances playing at the moment: the uh, ambience and the footsteps of the player. So let's quickly jump back in and add some more. should do so let's quickly jump back over here and as you can see the totals risen to seven so even though we only had two different sounds playing at once or two different events footsteps oh my god so noisy today two different events ambience and the footsteps you can see over time we've been uh, building and building and building all these instances which is not good because that will affect other things that will affect like like i said cpu which will just go up and up and up uh so yeah that's something to monitor uh, cool. So, and um, I suppose here the orange uh, line is the amount of instances we've got playing at playing events, and the amount of instances that are doing jack, essentially. Cool. So, I think that's everything. So, we've talked about today how we can stop events events uh, passing through a specific bus. In fact, let's quickly go back to our mixer. So, like I said earlier, if I was to quickly create a bus, uh, blah, 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 the group. I don't know, call that whatever, music. Uh, if I wanted to stop all my music going through this bus at any given point, for whatever reason, I can do. Uh, and we've also learned how we can control our instances, even if they're not one shots. Like we said in a, a previous video of mine, one shots are great because they play a sound, destroys the event, done, simple. But if we wanted to, if we wanted to have the loops, if we wanted to maybe create an instance, attach event to it, and then call that event back at specific points, but then it gets to the point where we don't need it anymore, you know, we can destroy it, uh, which is very nice. So hopefully, very simple stuff. 
uh, very specific stuff as well. These are probably your only probably need is if you're you know building a big project and you've got a lot of sounds going on, you want to control them a bit. Uh, it's just little things to kind of remember and bear in mind. So, uh, as always, I've been Henry Scott. Uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Henry Scott Zero and check out some of my other videos. My plan, I've freed up a bit of time now, so my plan is to crack out a lot more sound design stuff, FMOD stuff, and maybe a few other projects I've got cooking up in my crazy brain. So let me know if you enjoyed this, if this has been helpful, if there's anything else you want to see. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.